A batch of 95 batteries has three defective batteries. If two batteries are to be chosen for use in a toy, what is the probability that both batteries are defective? When I read this problem, I see that it's multiplication rule right away. Multiplication rule of probability. It says, what is the probability? So I know it's a probability question, right? And it says that both batteries are defective. That means we're selecting two batteries. It says here, two batteries are to be chosen in a toy, to be for use in a toy. Well, if we're selecting more than one, it's probably multiplication rule, right? Especially if both items are supposed to do the same thing. In this case, both are going to be defective. So that means they're um, we don't have to worry about one being defective, one not being defective, anything like that. So we're looking for the probability that both are defective, so they're both behaving the same way. We're selecting two of them. It's a probability question. This is a clear-cut case of multiplication rule of probability. Remember, anytime you take more than one item, it's most likely multiplication rule of probability. Okay, now at that point, we have to write a probability statement to solve the problem. So we're going to say probability that both are defective. Okay, so I know what I have to find. The fact that it's both are defective, meaning two things are being taken, I'm going to have two probability spaces here, right? Remember, when it says two batteries are to be chosen for use in a toy, then we have to have a space to represent each choice, right? Every time I go in to take a battery, I need to have a probability space to represent how that's going to turn out. Now we're looking for the probability that both are defective. So remember, before I put any numbers in these spaces, I need to first know what they represent. Because otherwise you're likely to put the wrong numbers in the, pop, in the place, right? You have to make sure you know what that space represents so you know what numbers go there. So I want you to take a moment and look at that space and say to yourself, what is that supposed to represent? And it's supposed to be the first selection, right? The first battery that's taken. And I want it to turn out how? I want it to turn out that it's defective. So I'm going to pretend that this came out and ended up being defective. But I'm going to ask myself, first of all, what's the probability the first battery, first battery is defective. Well, we know how to do that, right? To figure out the probability the first battery is defective, we have to say what? The number of batteries that are defective over the total, right? So don't forget that basic idea of basic probability. Number of defective batteries, right? over always the total, right? Number of defective batteries for the next one, left over the total. Now, let's see what I've written here. I wrote, for the first fraction, it's the number of defective batteries in the batch over the total. And then here I wrote the number of defective batteries left over the total. Why would I say the number of defective batteries left? Because it tells me that these two batteries are to be chosen for use in a toy. So we have to think for ourselves whether this is sampling with replacement or sampling without replacement. And I'm going to say that this is clearly sampling without replacement. So I'm going to take that battery, the first one, put it into the toy, and then I'm going to go back and get the next battery. So that battery I've already stuck in the toy, it's not going it back into the batch for, for use, right? I know that it's not available to be selected again. So now that means my total has been reduced, right? So in fact, you would properly write this as total left, right? The total amount that's left in the batch. And I know that the number of defectives is going to be less because I'm going to assume the first battery I took was defective. So remember, when you're doing this probability that's dependent, you have to assume that the first case turned out how you expected it to turn out, in this case that it was defective. So I'm going to go into the batch of batteries. I'm looking for the probability the first battery is defective. That's going to be the number of defective batteries over the total. Once I get that answer, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to say, well, what would be the number of defective batteries left, assuming that I got a defective battery on that first selection, divided by the total number of batteries that are left, assuming that I took a battery out in the first selection. Okay, so that should basically clear that up. And, you know, again, if you wanted to write this out in words, you'd say this is what? The probability, right? The probability the second battery is defective given the first was, right? Given the first was defective. Okay, so probability of the first battery is defective, the probability of the second battery is defective given the first was defective. All right, so that's the structure of our fractions. And to solve, all we have to do is put some numbers in. So let's go ahead and fill in our two fractions right here. Shouldn't be too hard to finish now. So at this point, we're going to say, okay, 
for the first part, number of defective batteries divided by the total. When we first go into the batch of batteries, how many are actually defective? Well, there are three defective batteries at that moment, right? Three defective batteries out of a total batch of 95 batteries. So I'm going to say there are three defective out of 95. That's the first probability. Now when I go back in, I'm going to assume that the battery I took this first time was defective. And I'm going to go back in and get another defective battery. So when I do that, the question is, what was the probability of that occurring? When I went back into the basket, what was the probability that I would grab a defective battery? Well, because I took one out here, there's only two defective batteries left, and there's only 94 total batteries left in the batch. And when I'm done, I just have to multiply those two out and divide. So let's do that. Let's do our uh, multiplication division. So of course, on top we have six, right? 6 divided by the product 95 times 94, and of course I'm putting the 95 times 94 in parentheses there before I divide by 6, and the result turns out to be a rather small probability here. It works out to be 0 0.000672. So that's it as a decimal, and then of course as a percent, we move this over two places and we only get 0.0672%. And that's it. So a very small probability of that occurring.